Alright, have I got a nail-biting lesson for you. Sort of. If you haven't seen my previous lesson on classical conditioning, I recommend that you do that first. But in summary, I explained that classical conditioning occurs in three phases. Before conditioning, you have your unconditioned stimulus naturally causing a con unconditioned response. And then you've also got this neutral stimulus that doesn't really have anything to do with it. But then conditioning occurs in which these two things are paired. And if that happens frequently enough, after conditioning, the neutral stimulus on its own results in a conditioned response, meaning that that now is a conditioned stimulus. And one of the things he wondered was, now that the dogs have been conditioned to the sound of the bell, what if instead of that, I use the sound of a buzzer? Pavlov discovered that after conditioning to the bell had occurred, the dog would also salivate when a buzzer was sounded, even though the buzzer had never been paired with the unconditioned stimulus of food. This was an example of stimulus generalization. So even though the buzzer wasn't the same as the bell, the dog seemed to have generalized what the stimulus was and would respond in the same way. The thing though was that if the buzzer was sounded over and over, but then not paired with the food, the dog would eventually learn not to respond with salivation. And if the bell was still occasionally paired with the food, then generalization would decrease as the dog now learns to respond only to the sound of the bell and not the buzzer. And this is called stimulus discrimination. Pavlov also wondered, once the dogs have been conditioned to the sound of that ringing bell, what if you continue to ring the bell but didn't provide any food? So you can see here on this wonderful axis, uh, I don't think I've ever read drops of saliva as a description here before. Uh, that these dogs are sort of salivating anywhere between, I don't know, 10 and like 12 drops uh, per trial when they hear the bell. So clearly conditioning has occurred. But then once you start ringing the bell and not providing food, on the 17th time, the 18th, 19th, and 20th, you can see really quickly the drops of saliva goes down, and we would call this pretty quick drop of the response an extinction. Repeat this enough, and it would eventually go down to like zero. But Pavlov found something really interesting, which is that after extinction had occurred, if he waited for a period of time and then rang the bell again, all of a sudden the dog would start salivating again. He called this a spontaneous recovery. There weren't any pairings that had been done, but it was as if the dog had suddenly remembered that the bell was associated with food. All right, let's define those four terms. So we talked about stimulus generalization, stimulus discrimination, extinction, and spontaneous recovery. You can pause the video at this point if you like to make some notes. Now it's worth saying that conditioning has a far stronger effect on animals than humans because they're primarily driven by instinct and we are far more complex. But the effect that conditioning has on us is probably stronger than we realize. For example, I used to always get swooped by magpies along this one path outside my old house. And to this day, thinking of that pathway it's like scares me and makes me want to duck. In fact, many phobias result because of conditioning. But that's not to say that we can't use conditioning for good. One unusual way to do that is using something called aversion therapy. So consider this. There are many people who bite their fingernails out of habit, often as a nervous response. But for some, especially in children, it can get to the point where their nails actually drop off and their fingers start to bleed. You probably don't want to Google this, by the way. So one way of getting these kids to stop that habit is by using a form of conditioning called aversion therapy. So it might look something like this. Biting the fingers is a neutral stimulus. It doesn't really result in anything negative to that kid. If anything, it's probably positive because, you know, they might be doing it out of comfort. However, there is a negative response to something called bitter aloes, which is a really bitter like gel-like substance that often causes like a gag reflex. Like it's an awful thing to taste. And so by pairing these two things together, which can be as easy as applying some bitter aloes to fingertips, then whenever the kid puts their fingers in their mouth, they taste those aloes and full on just gag because it tastes so, so awful. After enough pairings of this, eventually just the thought or the act of putting the fingers in the mouth is enough to trigger that gag reflex. The kids actually feel nauseous and want to vomit just by putting their fingers in their mouth, which stops them from doing it. So that's just one example of, I guess, a helpful application of classical conditioning. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at a different form of conditioning, operant conditioning. <laughs>